Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week, and if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. For today's tutorial, we'll make a modern cable vest. As we all know, one, cables are the best, two, when it's hot, sleeves are unnecessary, and three, nothing reads modern more than ribbing and a stand-up collar. Speaking of, if you're looking for even more modern crochet makes, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of the most modern crochet tutorials and patterns dropping weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work but I used a total of 275 grams of yarn, and that's 375 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us if you have a favorite dinosaur. Ever since the Land Before Time movies, I have been partial to the Triceratops. Details for the giveaway down below. We are using six stitches for this project, and will be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. Half double crochet. Treble crochet. and double treble crochet. This pattern is made for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we are all going to grab our category 4 yarn, make a slip knot, then we're all going to grab our 5mm hook. Then we are all, no matter what size we're making, going to start with our cable stitch detail, and that's all going to start with a chain 9. Now that we all have our chain, we're all going to do a half double crochet row. So block off that last chain and do a chain 2. That chain 2 does not count as a stitch, that is our turning chain. And now we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook with a half double. So we're going to insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. Let's do one more. Yarn over, into that following chain, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. Continue with one half double crochet into every chain. We should all have a total of nine half double crochets. Our row one is complete. Everyone's row two is going to be a half double crochet row again. So let's all chain two, flip our work, and put one half double crochet into every stitch again for a total of nine half double crochets. So, our first two rows are finished. Now let's get started on our row three, or our first cable stitch row. So let's all chain two, and flip our work. Now every cable stitch row is going to be an odd number row, and every cable stitch row is going to be worked into our previous odd number row. So since we're working on our row three, we're going to be inserting our hook into our row one. And is always going to start off with a front post treble crochet, and that's going to be our pillar for video's sake. So how to do a front post treble is yarn over twice. We're all going to start by finding our first half double crochet from our row one, making sure that we're not counting that chain two because that's our turning chain. We're going to bring our hook down and underneath the body of that first half double crochet from our row one. So insert your hook underneath and through the other side. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through two until there's one loop left on our hook. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now our pillar is all finished. Now let's do our cable stitch detail. So we're all going to start with a front post double treble crochet. So how that's going to work is a yarn over of three. So there's one, there's two, there's three. Then taking a look at our row one again, we're going to be skipping our following two stitches. 
So since we're worked into this stitch, we're going to skip one, skip two. Into that following stitch, we're going to bring our hook underneath the body of that stitch and through the other side, yarn over, pull through. And once we are pulled through, again, we're gonna yarn over and pull through two until there's one loop left on our hook. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now we're going to do another front post double treble crochet into that following stitch. So again, yarn over one, two, three times. Underneath the body of that following half double crochet from our row one, bring our hook under and through the other side, pull through. Then all together, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now we're going to be working into those two skipped stitches, putting one front post double treble crochet into each of those. So yarn over three times again, and inserting our hook into that first skipped stitch, which is the stitch that's nearest to our pillar, we're gonna bring our hook back into that first stitch and through the other side, Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, 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 and then another front post double treble crochet into that next skipped stitch. So yarn over three times again. Bring our hook down into that skipped stitch and through the other side, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. Now from there, we should all have one, two, three, four stitches left. Now we're going to finish off our cable stitch detail with two front post treble crochets into each of the next following stitches. So yarn over twice, find that following stitch from our row one, bring our hook down underneath that stitch through the other side, and pull through. Then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That is our first front post treble crochet. And then into that following stitch as well, yarn over twice. Underneath that following stitch, through the other side, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. Now those six stitches that we just did, so not counting that pillar, is our cable stitch detail. Now our cable stitch detail is always going to be framed with our pillars, which is always going to be a front post treble. So we should all have two stitches left and what we're going to do is yarn over twice, bring our hook down, underneath that second to last stitch from our row one, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, and then just to secure this row down, one half double crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. So pull through, pull through all three. We should all have a total of nine stitches finished up. And now from here, every even number row is going to be a half double crochet row. So what we're all gonna do is chain two, flip our work and put one half double crochet into every stitch for a total of nine half double crochets. We are back and we should all have one, two, three, four rows finished. Now let's get started on our row five or our second cable stitch row. So let's all chain two and flip our work. So getting started on our row five, like I said, every cable stitch row is gonna start with a front post treble crochet. And every cable stitch row is going to be worked into our previous odd number row. So since we're working on row five, we're gonna be inserting our hook into our row three or our previous cable stitch row. Now to do our pillar, we're all gonna yarn over twice. Finding that first stitch from our previous odd number row, which is our row three, and it is our front post treble crochet, we're gonna insert a hook underneath the body of that stitch and through the other side, and pull through. From here, we're gonna yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. Now to get started on a row five's cable stitch detail, it's gonna start with two front post treble crochets. So yarn over twice again. Finding the first two stitches into our row three, which might be a little hard to see because they should be underneath, but if you separate your work, you should be able to see them. 
insert your hook underneath that first stitch with one front post treble crochet. And then into that following stitch, another front post treble crochet. Now from here, we're going to be doing a set of two front post double treble crochets, skipping over the following two stitches and into the following two stitches after that. So yarn over three times. We're going to skip one, skip two, and then one front post double treble crochet into each of the following two stitches. So insert through the other side, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, and then one more front post double treble crochet into that following stitch. So yarn over three times again. Underneath that stitch and through the other side, pull through, pull through two, 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 and two. Now from here, we're all gonna have to do a set of two front post double treble crochets, working into those two skip stitches, but underneath that window that we just made for ourselves. So let's get that started. We're all going to yarn over one, two, three times. Now we're all going to hang on to our working yarn because it can very easily fall off. And then we're going to pull our hook down towards us, finding these two stitches in through that window. So we're gonna hang on to our working yarn and pull down. And these are my two skip stitches. Here's one, here's two. I'm gonna insert my hook underneath that first skip stitch. So bring your hook back. It may be a little awkward, but just insert your hook underneath through the other side, pull through and finish up our front post double treble crochet per usual. So yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. Now that is our first crossover for row five. Let's do the next one. So yarn over one, two, three times again. Hang on to your working yarn and pull our work down. Finding that next skip stitch, this is mine right here. I'm going to insert my hook and through the other side and pull through. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. And if we yank our work up a little bit, that is our cable stitch detail for our row five. Now from here, every cable stitch row, our last two stitches is always gonna be a front post treble crochet, which is our pillar, and then a half double. So yarn over twice, into that following stitch from our row three, insert, pull through, pull through two, 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 and then one half double crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. And now our row five is complete. Now, like I said in the previous clip, every even number row is going to be a half double crochet row. So we're all gonna chain two, flip our work, and put one half double crochet into every stitch. All right, so we are back. We have just finished up our first six rows, and now it's going to be repeat of rows three through six until we get the total height that we need. Now let's just get started on the following row to make sure that we all got it down. So let's all chain two and flip our work. Now we're about to get started on our row seven, which is going to be a repeat of row three. Now, as a reminder, every cable stitch row is going to be worked into our previous cable stitch row or our previous odd number row. So we're working on row seven. We're gonna be inserting our hook into our row five. And every cable stitch row is always gonna start with a front post treble crochet into our previous cable stitch row. So really quickly, we're gonna yarn over twice. Bring our hook underneath that stitch, through the other side, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, and that is our pillar. Now just to get started on our row three, we're all going to yarn over three times, preparing for a front post double treble, skip the first two stitches, and then into the following two stitches, one front post treble crochet into each. So bring your hook in there, underneath, through the other side, and continue to pull through two until we all have one loop left on our hook. And then another front post treble crochet into the following. And then just to finish off our row three, one front post double treble crochet into each of the two stitches that we just skipped over, one front post treble crochet into the following two stitches, and then always close off every cable stitch row with a front post treble crochet, which is our pillar, and then a half double crochet to secure the row down. Now, if you need timestamps for rows three through six, they will all be linked within the description. But we're all gonna continue to repeat these rows until we have a portion that can reach 
placing this first row where we want the bottom of this top to be, all the way up until we reach the base of our neck. I'll meet you back right after a cable stitch row and then we can get started on the side panel. I have just finished up the length of my cable stitch detail. Now I wanted my top to be full length, so I have a total of 53 rows and this length is roughly 16 inches or 41 centimeters. And now we're all gonna get started on the left front panel. So from where we're at, we all should have ended right after a cable stitch row. We're all gonna chain one, flip our work, and we're going to work down the side of our cable stitch detail. And all we're gonna do is alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row. So let's all start by finding our first side row, which is the side of our first cable stitch row. Find that top loop and insert with one single crochet. This is my following side row. Insert into there with two. So there's one into that same top loop with two. Again, this is my following side row. Insert with one. This is my following side row. Insert with two. So there's one and then there's two. And we're going to continue alternating between one to two single crochets into every side row to reach the end of the row. We've made our way all the way down with our single crochet row. Now we're going to get started on our following row, which is a back loop slip stitch row. So chain one and flip. Now what we're all going to do is find that next available stitch and insert into that back loop. So into that stitch that's furthest away from us, we're going to yarn over and gently pull through everything on our hook. Let's do this again. Into that next stitch, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, and into that next stitch's back loop yarn over and pull through everything. Continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch until we reach the end of the row. And remember not to tuck too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the following row can be a little bit too tight to work into. We've made our way all the way up with our back loop slip stitch row. Now we're gonna do our following row, which is a back loop half double crochet row, so it's all chain two and flip our work. So getting started on our half double crochet row, they're now going to be within the back loops and it's gonna start with an increase of two half double crochets. So yarn over. Find that first stitch, insert into that back loop, and insert with one half double, and then into that same back loop, insert with a second half double crochet. And from here, all we're gonna do is put one back loop half double crochet into the rest of our stitches. All right, so we are back. We have just made our way all the way down with our back loop half double crochet row. Now from here, it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows. So at the end of our half double crochet row, we are all going to chain one, flip our work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And then at the end of that row, it's going to be our half double crochet row. So we're all gonna chain two, flip our work, start our half double crochet row off with an increase of two back loop half double crochets, and then put one back loop half double crochet into the rest of our stitches. Continue to repeat these two rows until we have a portion that can reach, making sure that we're placing our cable stitch detail at mid chest over to the side of our neck. And I'll meet you guys back right after a slip stitch row, sew along the top so we can do our shoulder portion from there. All right, so we are back and our neckline is all finished. Now I have a total of 12 rows counting from my first single crochet row here. This width is two and a half inches or seven centimeters, or my total width is five inches or 13 centimeters. Now from here, we all should have ended along the top right after a back loop slip stitch row. So what we're all going to do from here is make a chain that reaches all the way up to the top of our shoulder, making sure that this last cable stitch row is at mid chest and at the base of our neck. So I have already measured mine out. I need roughly an inch and a half or four centimeters, so I made a chain seven. And now for our shoulder portion, we're going to do our back loop half double and back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases. So after our chain, we're all gonna block off that last chain and make a chain two. Now that our chain two is finished, that doesn't count as a stitch, we're going to insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook with a half double crochet because that's the next row in our row sequence. And then from here, put one half double crochet into every chain and then one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. And at the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Then from there, continue to repeat our back loop half double and back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases until we have a shoulder portion that reaches about mid collarbone. And then I'll meet you back right after a back loop half double crochet row or along the bottom. All right, so we are back. I have just finished up my shoulder portion. 
I now have a total of 17 rows and this width is now three and a half inches or nine centimeters or my total width is six inches or 15 centimeters. Now from here, we're gonna get started on our underarm portion. But first things first, we're all going to need to insert a stitch marker into any stitch that we have that's nearest to the corner of our underarm. Now I've inserted my stitch marker into the 28th stitch from the top and that's just about six inches or 15 centimeters. And we do wanna keep in mind that we are going to have a shoulder band as well. That's roughly about one inch. But once we have this, we're going to get started on our underarm portion. So since we all should have ended along the bottom, we're all gonna chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch until we are worked into the stitch right before our stitch marker. So we've made our way all the way up with our back loop slip stitch row. And now we're going to get started on our following half double crochet row. So let's all chain two and flip our work. So getting started on our first half double crochet row for our underarm, we're all going to start our row with a decrease of three back loop half doubles. So yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch's back loop, pull through into that next stitch's back loop, pull through and then into that next stitch's back loop as well, pull through for a total of one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all five, and then from here continue with one back loop half double into every stitch. From here, it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows. So our following row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row with absolutely no increases and no decreases. Then our following back loop half double crochet row is going to start with a decrease of three half doubles. Continue to repeat these two rows until we have a portion that can stretch over to mid underarm. Everyone's last row should be a back loop slip stitch row. And we wanna make sure that when we're measuring this up to ourselves, one, we're stretching it as if we're wearing it. And two, our cable stitch detail is remaining at mid chest. I'll meet you back when we have our underarm portion all finished up. So we are back. We have just finished up our underarm portion and I now have a total of 22 rows. My width is roughly four and a half inches or 12 centimeters or my total width is seven inches or 18 centimeters. Right after my last back loop slip stitch row, we all did a chain up of one and cut and now we're going to somewhat repeat everything we did here on the other side. And I say somewhat because the ribbing isn't reversible. So we're going to need to insert our hook into a different spot. So to get started on the right side of our front panel, we're all going to insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of our cable stitch detail. Now our first two rows are going to be completely the same. So we're gonna start with a single crochet row alternating between one to two single crochets into every side row. We should have the same amount of stitches as our front panel. And then our following row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row. So when we reach the end of the row, chain one, flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And then I'll meet you back at the end of our back loop slip stitch row. All right, so I am back. Along the right side of my cable, I have finished up my first single crochet row, my back loop slip stitch row, and got started on the following row, which I didn't quite tell you guys what to do, but that third row is going to be a back loop half double crochet row. So after our slip stitch row, we all should have ended along the bottom. Chain two, flip your work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one. And then once we have just one stitch left, we're all gonna do an increase of two back loop half double crochets to match the increasing we did on this side. So into that last stitch, yarn over, insert into that back loop with one half double, and then into that same back loop with a second half double. And that's basically it. From here, we're gonna continue to repeat these two rows. So a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases, and then a back loop half double crochet row that now ends with an increase of two back loop half doubles. We're gonna continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of total rows as this neckline portion on the left side of our cable stitch detail. We should all end right after a back loop slip stitch row, which is along the bottom. Once we have that, I will meet you guys back just so I can talk you guys through how we're going to do the shoulder for the right side. All right, so we are back. I have just finished up the neckline portion of my front panel. We all should have ended along the bottom right after a back loop slip stitch row. And all I did was pulled out some slack, so I did not do a chain of one cut, but mainly because I don't like to weave in my ends later. So all I'm gonna do from here is now insert my hook into the top corner stitch of my piece and then make a chain for the same amount of chains that we made on this side. So for me, that was a chain seven. So all I'm gonna do is insert my tail end of my yarn onto my hook, pull through and start with a chain seven for me. Once when I have that, I'm just going to pull through and cut. And once when I have my chain, I'm going to reinsert my hook into my working yarn, which is where I left my slack loop and then chain two, flip my work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch and one half double crochet into every chain. The following row is gonna be a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. 
And we're just going to continue to repeat those two rows. So a back loop half double and back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases for the same amount of rows as our first shoulder portion. When we have that, we should all end along the top. When we do, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll meet you back so we can do the underarm portion together. And just as a really quick tip, this shoulder portion should have the same amount of stitches as our first shoulder portion. All right, so my shoulder portion for this side of my front panel is finished. Once when I had the same amount of rows as my first shoulder portion, I did do a chain up of one and cut because we all should have ended along the top. Now from here, we're going to do our underarm. So what we're gonna do is start by inserting our stitch marker into the same amount of stitches that we skipped on this side of our underarm. So for those of you that have my numbers, I inserted my stitch marker into the 28th stitch from the top on this side. So I did the same thing over here. Now we're gonna flip our work over so that we're looking at the back panel and then we can get started on our first slip stitch row. So we're all gonna start by inserting our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our stitch marker stitch, working our way down towards the bottom and we do wanna make sure that we're inserting our hook into that back loop. From here, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook and then do a back loop slip stitch row working down towards the bottom with no increases and no decreases. Then we're going to chain two, flip our work, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last three stitches and then we'll decrease together and I'll let you do the rest on your own. All right, so our slip stitch row is all finished. At the end of that row, we did a chain two, flipped our work and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last three stitches. So now we can do a decrease of three together. So all we're gonna do is yarn over, insert our hook into that third to last back loop, pull through into that second to last back loop, pull through and then into that last back loop, pull through for a total of one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all five of those loops. That's it, from here continue to repeat our two previous rows. So a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases, and then a back loop half double crochet row that ends on a decrease of three. We're gonna continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of underarm rows as the first underarm portion that we did. And then we're gonna do a chain up of one and cut right after that last row, which should be a slip stitch row. Then I'll meet you back so we can get started on the back panel. All right, so we are back. The entirety of our front panel is all finished. I have a total of nine inches or 23 centimeters unstretched. And now we're gonna get started on our back panel. So I did do a chain up of one and cut right after my last underarm row for the front panel. So let's grab our yarn and we can get started on the back panel's underarm. Now getting started on the back panel, we're all going to start by making a chain for the same amount of stitches that we have for our last underarm row. Now it doesn't matter which underarm portion you count because it should end on the same amount of stitches for both sides. So for me, I had a total of 59 stitches. So I will now make a chain of 59 and I actually already have my first underarm portion finished up. So I'm just gonna be doing a small sample size with you. Now that we have our chain, we're going to do our first row, which is going to be a slip stitch row. So block off that last chain and do a chain one. Now that chain one does not count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. Into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. So we're gonna insert our hook, get two loops on our hook, yarn over and then pull through both of those loops, making sure that we're pulling gently, otherwise the falling row can be too tight to work into. Again, into that next chain, insert, pull through both. Continue with one slip stitch into every chain. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, getting started on our following row, which is going to be a back loop half double crochet row, we're all going to chain two, that doesn't count as a stitch, flip our work and start this row off with an increase of three back loop half double crochets because our underarm portion for the front panel had a decrease of three. So yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitches back loop with our first half double, into that same stitches back loop with a second half double, and then again into that same stitches back loop with a third half double crochet, and that is our increase. And now from here, put one back loop half double crochet into the rest of our stitches. Our following row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row. So chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch with no increases and no decreases. And then the following row is going to be the same as this one. So a back loop half double crochet row that starts with an increase of two back loop half double crochets. We're gonna continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of underarm rows as the front panel. We should all end right after a slip stitch row. So right after an odd number row, and then I'll meet you back so that we can get started on the shoulder together. So my underarm portion for my back panel is all finished. Like I said, we should have all ended along the top. And now from here, we're all going to make a chain for the same amount of stitches that we skipped when we got started on our front panel's underarm portion. 
So just as a reference, I skipped a total of 28 stitches here before I got started on my underarm. So what I did was make a chain of 28. Then we're going to get started on our following row. Everyone's following row is going to be a half double crochet row. So block off that last chain and do a chain two. Now that chain two doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. Then we're all going to yarn over and insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook with a half double crochet. From here, we're all going to put one half double crochet into every chain, and then once we reach the body, one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. At the end of the row, we're all gonna chain one, flip our work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Then a back loop half double crochet row, and from here on out, our back loop half double and back loop slip stitch rows will not have any increases or decreases. Now we're gonna continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same width as the front panel from shoulder, across our chest to our shoulder. And once we have roughly the same width as our front panel, we should all end right after back loop half double crochet row, which should end along the bottom. And then I'll meet you back just to talk you guys through how we're going to do our underarm portion, which should be the same way that we did our first underarm portion together. All right, so we are back with the width of our back panel. Now I have a total of 42 rows, and this width is roughly nine inches or 23 centimeters unstretched. And I went ahead and already did my underarm portion as well, but it's going to be done the same exact way as our front panel's first underarm portion. But before we do that, we're all going to want to make sure that we're inserting a stitch marker into the middle row that we have within the back panel. Now it should be a half double crochet row for everyone. So just count in your rows two at a time, counting from the edges until we reach our one middle row and insert a stitch marker into there. Now, just to talk you guys through how to do the second underarm portion for the back panel, we're all gonna start by inserting our stitch marker into the same amount of chains that we made that led all the way up to the shoulder. So it should be the same as the amount of chains that we had over here. Then, since we all should have ended along the bottom, we're gonna put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch until we reach our stitch marker. Chain two, flip our work, start our following half double crochet row off with a decrease of three half double crochets, and then one back loop half double crochet into the rest of our stitches. So a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases, and then a back loop half that starts with a decrease of three. We're gonna continue to repeat those two rows until we have the same amount of underarm rows as all of the other underarm portions that we have. We should all end right after a back loop slip stitch row. And then once we have that, I'll meet you back so we can seam everything together. All right, so let's all get started on seaming our sides. So we're all gonna place our front panel on top of our back panel, making sure that all the details is along the inside. So the ribbing for the back panel is faced up and then the detail for the front panel, including the cable stitch detail that you can kind of see, is faced down because we want the seam to be along the inside. And then we're going to insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. And we're now going to do a single crochet seam. So insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. And just to do the first few, we're all going to start by finding that first stitch into the front panel, insert, first stitch into the back panel, insert, and single crochet. Let's do this again. Next stitch into the front panel, insert, next stitch into the back panel, insert, and single crochet. And that's it. We're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back once we do the same thing on the other side. All right, so we are back. Our sides are all seamed up, and now we're going to seam the shoulders. So doing the shoulders, we're all going to insert our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back panel, making sure that our work is still flipped wrong side out. Then we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. Now all we're gonna do is another single crochet seam, but we're gonna be putting two single crochets into every side half double, and one single crochet into every side slip stitch row. So let's get this started. Everyone's first side row should be a side half double crochet row. So we're gonna find that top loop within the front panel, insert your hook. Find that same top loop within the back panel, insert your hook into there and insert with one single crochet. And then we're gonna be putting one more single crochet into that same side row because it's a half double. So into that same top loop within the front, same top loop within the back. Now the second single crochet should be a little bit easier since everything should be gathered and we're just going to single crochet around everything. And then everyone's following side row should be a side slip stitch row. So find that top loop, insert into the front panel, find the side slip stitch row within the back panel, find that top loop, insert your hook with just one single crochet. And that's it. We're gonna continue to put two single crochets in every side half double. 
one single crochet into every side slip until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. Do a chain up one cut and then repeat on the other side. Alrighty, so now that everything is all seamed up, we're ready to get started just on the armhole detail. So what we're all going to do is make sure the work is flipped right side out now, and then we're all going to insert our hook into the last stitch from our side seam. Then from here, we're going to do a single crochet row. So after we've inserted our yarn onto our hook, we're all going to chain one. Then we're going to have a few side rows to work into. So we're all going to start by putting one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, and then two single crochet into every side half double crochet row. So just do the first few. Everyone's first side row should be a side slip stitch row, so insert in through there with just one single crochet and then into the following side row which is a side half double insert into there with two single crochets so there is one and then there's two and that's it we're going to continue doing this working our way up our underarm then once we reach our stitches put one single crochet into every stitch making our way all the way up and over then finish off the row with our few side rows continuing to put two single crochet in, into every side half double one single crochet into every side slip and then once we've made our way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain space. So our single crochet row along our armhole is all finished. Now we're all going to make a chain the height that we'd like for our underarm detail to be. So I'd like for mine to be roughly about an inch or two centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of four. Now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. So insert pull through everything on our hook and that's it remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch continue with one slip stitch into every chain now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain we're now going to slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base so into there we're going to insert our hook yarn over and pull through everything on our hook and that slip stitch does not count as a stitch that's just to connect now in order to work our way up to the following row we're going to slip stitch into that following stitch into the base as well so insert your hook, yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. Now this slip stitch into the base doesn't count as a stitch either. We're going to flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of that row, chain one, flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And then I'll meet you back at the base so that we can connect it together. And just as a really quick tip, we should have the same amount of stitches as chains that we made when we got started on this portion for every single row. So we have just finished up our first one, two, three rows, and now we're just going to connect it into the base again once more. So connecting any odd number row, we're going to slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base, remembering that this slip stitch does not count as a stitch, that's just to connect. And then in order to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. That stitch still does not count as a stitch. Flip our work and then continue to repeat our two previous rows, making our way all the way up and over. Then I'll meet you back when we don't have any more stitches left to work into, so we can seam it all together. Alrighty, so we are back. We made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches left, and now we're going to seam it together using an outside loop slip stitch seam. So for this seam, we're all going to make sure that our work is flipped right side out, and then we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then we're all going to yarn over, pull through everything on our hook, and just to do the first few, we're going to find that first available stitch into the front panel and insert only in through that front loop. Next, we're going to find that next stitch into the back panel and insert only in through that back loop. Then when we have those three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three. Let's just do one more together. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert only in through that front loop. Then into that next stitch into the back panel, insert only in through that back loop. Then yarn over, pull through all three. And we're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. Alrighty, so we are back. Our armhole detail on both sides is all finished, and now we're going to finish up our piece with our collar. So first things first, we're all going to want to make sure that we're inserting our stitch marker into the two middle stitches that we have into the cable stitch detail. So what we're all going to do is start by counting our pillars from our cable stitch detail, and we're going to count one stitch in on both sides until we reach our fourth and fifth stitch. Now, just to clear up any confusion, I know that we did have a total of nine stitches for the cable stitch detail, but that last half double crochet is taken up by that single crochet that we did along the edge, so we're not going to be counting that stitch. So just finding our pillars on both sides, here's my first, here's the first on this side, so here's one, two, three, 
and then four five are our two middle stitches so i just inserted my stitch marker into the fourth and fifth stitch now from here we're going to do a single crochet row around everything so i'm going to flip my work over making sure that my work is flipped right side out and looking at the back so all we're going to do is do a single crochet row so i'm just going to talk you guys through it into every side row we're going to be putting one single crochet into every side slip stitch row two single crochets into every side half double crochet row now once we reach our stitch marker stitch along the back which should be worked into our side half double crochet row two single crochets will be worked into the top of that row which is per usual and we do want to make sure that we're inserting our stitch marker into the both of those single crochets that's into that middle row within the back and then once we reach the front panel we have some regular stitches to work into so just one single crochet into each of those then some more side rows so one single crochet into every side slip stitch two single crochet into every side half double crochet and putting one single crochet into the top of every cable stitch stitch making sure that once we reach those two middle stitches that we insert our stitch marker to we're going to be inserting our stitch marker into those two middle stitches as well and then continue that making our way all the way around once we've reached our chain space we're all going to do a chain up of one and cut and then i'll meet you back to work on the height of our collar all right so our single crochet row is all finished up we did do a chain up of one and cut right after that last stitch and we made sure that our stitch markers are still into our middle stitches within the back and the front now from here we're going to get started on our collar so making sure that our work is still flipped right side out right side up we are going to be inserting our hook into one of our middle stitch marker stitches within the front panel and this is going to start off the same for every size so from here we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook pull through and we're all going to start by doing a chain two now that first chain is going to count as a stitch that second chain is our turning chain so into that first chain that we made we're going to insert with one slip stitch so skipping that second chain insert your hook into that first chain that we made with a slip stitch so yarn over pull through everything on our hook and now we're going to connect it into the base and the connection is going to be the same as our armhole detail so just find that next available stitch insert your hook yarn over and pull through everything on our hook now that slip stitch into the base does not count as a stitch now we're going to work our way up to the following row so slip stitch into that following stitch into the base and now flip our work none of those slip stitches into the base count as a stitch so now we're getting started on our row two so for every even number row all we're going to do is put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch for our row two we actually just have one stitch so insert into that first stitch's back loop yarn over pull through everything our row two is technically finished and now to get started on our following row we're now going to chain two and flip our work now that first chain is going to count as a stitch that second chain is going to count as our turning chain and flip our work now from here inserting our hook into that second chain from our hook we're going to insert with a slip stitch so insert pull through everything remembering not to tug too tightly and then we should have just one stitch left so insert into that back loop with a back loop slip stitch and now our row three is finished let's connect it into the base so into that next available stitch insert pull through everything to connect our row three now from here it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows so every even number row is going to be one back loop slip stitch into every stitch closing off that row with a chain two that first chain counts as a stitch second chain counts as our turning chain and then every odd number row you're going to start by inserting your hook into that second chain from your hook with a back loop slip stitch and then one back loop slip stitch into every stitch so we will have one more stitch into every odd number row so let's just do the following two rows together to make sure that we have it down we just connected our odd number row and let's work our way up to our falling even number row so slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base flip our work and then from here we're going to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and we all should just have two so far so find that first stitches back loop pull through everything and then into that next stitches back loop pull through everything now at the edge of every odd number row we're going to chain two first chain counts as a stitch second chain counts as a chain flip our work and then into that second chain from our hook we're going to insert with a back loop slip stitch remembering not to tug too tightly and then continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch so this row should have one more stitch than our previous row so there's my first back loop slip and there is my following back loop slip and now just to connect it into the base together once more find that next available stitch insert with a slip to close off this row and then just to work our way up to the following row slip stitch into that following stitch into the base 
that doesn't count as a stitch, flip our work and then repeat. We're gonna continue to repeat these two rows until we get the total height that we want for our collar. And I'll meet you guys back along the base just so I can talk you guys through how we're going to finish up the collar. Alrighty, I am back and I have a total of 25 rows. Now from here, this is the height that I'd like for the rest of my collar to be. We should have all ended right after an odd number row. So all I'm gonna do is basically repeat what we did for the armhole. So just to talk you guys through it, I'm going to slip stitch into that following stitch into the base, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of that following row, we're just going to chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again. And just continue to repeat those two rows, now with absolutely no increases and no decreases until we reach our stitch marker stitch within the back. Once we're worked into that stitch, do a chain up of one and cut, and then we're going to repeat everything that we just did here, all the increase rows and then all the solid rows that work our way back on this side right over here. But once we reach our stitch marker stitch within the back, do not do a chain up of one and cut, because then we can just seam it all together. So we have made our way all the way around with both sides of our collar, and now we're going to seam everything up. So this seam is going to be the same seam that we did for our armhole details, and that's going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam. So making sure that our work is still hooked right side out, right side up, we're going to insert our hook into that first available stitch into the front panel, and insert only into that front loop, and then into that next available stitch into the back panel, insert only in through that back loop. So here's mine. Yarn over and pull through everything on our hook, and that's it. We're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, and when we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so we are back. We have just finished up seaming our collar and we are all done. Last thing we're gonna have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye!